Um, and that's somebody using the Lars House website. So basically, has anybody used the uh, city zoning map? Has anybody gone to city of Chicago? Right? So when the city released its large lot program, they gave a list of all the things that people need to do. You need to find a city-owned lot that is on your block, right? Again, the residents during the land use planning process said, you know, we've used NLAP to the fullest, and we still want to keep going and purchasing lots on our block and expanding our, you know, residential footprints to revitalize the block. We need a tool that is more flexible and more expansive than NLAP. So, and as you know, one, yes, one yes, I'm about to just, yes. exactly, right? Uh, the adjacent neighbor land acquisition program. It means you can buy... If you have a house and you're surrounded by vacant lots, you can buy a lot that is adjacent to your property, right? One. But only one, yeah. And we also do an appraisal for those, and they're sold at, they're sold at some value. That's right. So it can be upwards of several thousand dollars. It can be a couple hundred dollars. It just varies, right? And so during this land use planning process, it came out that one, the adjacent parcel, okay, a resident, several residents had already purchased that one. Right? I knew one resident who had a building across the street. Uh, from their home where they rent out to other residents, uh, but they were not eligible to apply for an adjacent parcel because you have to live in the building, right, uh, that is adjacent to the lot that you want to purchase, right? So there were some constraints that needed to be relaxed. We call it an expanded NLAP program, right, before it had a name, right? So we were thinking through what would that look like and how do we design a program that would not become like a land grab, <laughs> right, in Inglewood. And so the city was very, very, I cannot emphasize enough how the city was responsive. I know everybody's jaded in Chicago, uh, but uh, and team working was letter of support for the land use planning process. We said that community engagement was earnest and real, and it was, right? The large lot program is a result of the city commissioners, bureaucracy listening to the desires and needs of the residents. So the residents said we needed a, a different kind of way to buy these vacant lots. I want to buy a lot on my block. I want to buy the lot adjacent to the adjacent vacant parcel, right? So how can we do that? So the result was the large lot program. And again, to find those lots, the city said, go to the city zoning map, which is very easy to use, right? And then make sure you click the layer of city-owned properties, right? Right. And this is actually like three pop-up windows, you know? <laughs> uh, and again, I've trained on this. I've trained on the city, uh, the, the city zoning map um, back a few years ago, and I would get confused, right? And so uh, we called up Derek. I'm kind of just flying over uh, Juan Pablo. So, like, literally, uh, the day uh, the uh, Green Healthy Neighborhoods Language Plan was passed, that's March 20th, I go from City Hall to the public library and I get on GChat or open up my Gmail account, and Juan Pablo hits me up, like, hey, what's going on with these dollar lots? Right? <laughs> and then, like, kind of snapped me back to tech world and was like, wait a minute, you know, this application process is going to be difficult, right? Uh, just to find a lot. How do we make that easy? Right? And then also, all the documents you needed were on the city's website but it was hard to discern what order we should be going through this process. So we called up Derek Eater at Data Made and said, you know, can we find a way to solve this problem? Can we make it, one, easy for residents to find available parcels on their, um, on their lot? So I